Randy is a not entirely hypothetical 28-year-old with a diagnosis of schizophrenia. His treatment has been complicated by his use of cannabis and alcohol. In this, he is not alone. Approximately 40% of all patients with schizophrenia use significant amounts of cannabis, alcohol, or illicit substances. Multiple motivation strategies have been tried to help move Randy away from the regular use of cannabis and alcohol to no avail. He doesn't appear to recognize that these substances could be a problem. But his insight is not zero. He takes three milligrams of oral risperidone daily, suggesting that he perceives some direct benefit from it. And perhaps for that reason, despite the near complete collapse of his social world, job, school, apparently zero functional relationships, he's not been offered an alternative antipsychotic such as clozapine. Could switching to clozapine have an impact on his substance use? Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. We might find some insights into that question in this examination of two national cohorts from Sweden and Finland, totaling 45,000 patients. Actually, I found most of the relevant insights in the article's introduction. For example, other studies have found that patients with schizophrenia are more likely to remit from alcohol use when using clozapine versus other antipsychotics. But one of the citations is the most intriguing. A 2012 study by Dr. Maurice Machielsen and her Dutch colleagues, they looked at 30 patients with a diagnosis of schizophrenia and significant cannabis use compared to eight patients with that diagnosis but no cannabis use and 20 healthy controls. And they found that the cannabis users had notable subjective craving when shown cannabis-related images, more than the non-users and the controls. Well, that's not too surprising, right? And also perhaps no surprise, in addition to greater craving, the cannabis users also had greater brain activation in substance use-related regions on functional MRI scans when shown the cannabis images. Those regions include the ventral striatum and amygdala. But now for the key finding, Dr. Machielsen and colleagues proceeded to randomize the patients, not the controls, to clozapine or risperidone. Yeah, the sample is small and the trial was open label, but of course the MRI machine doesn't require blinding as to what medication the patient is taking. And the question was, will clozapine dampen the MRI signal, that's functional MRI, associated with craving more than risperidone? And why should we care? Well, remember, risperidone and the typical antipsychotics cause a hypodopaminergic state in the mesolimbic cortex. Dr. Machielsen and others have speculated that this iatrogenic hypodopaminergic state could cause craving for substances that increase limbic dopamine, like dopaminergic stimulants, but also the THC in cannabis. Because THC reduces the release of GABA in the striatum, that in turn causes a dopaminergic neuron to release more dopamine. So you see here, the implication is that D2 blockade with antipsychotics could actually set people up for cannabis use. They're trying to get back some of the dopaminergic activity that we're suppressing. From what I could see in these articles, that this notion of an iatrogenic contribution to cannabis and craving is mostly speculation. But in any case, the implication is that clozapine, by working through means other than D2 blockade, would not create craving for cannabis that risperidone might. So let's see. In that functional MRI study of patients with a schizophrenia diagnosis and a history of regular cannabis use, remember the sample of 38 patients was randomized to risperidone or clozapine, actually just the patient part of the sample, and the outcome measure was functional MRI activation of mesolimbic structures when viewing cannabis-related issues. And sure enough, compared to their baseline response, after four weeks of treatment, those receiving clozapine showed a larger decrease in amygdala activation than those randomized to risperidone. Well, that's all background for this new epidemiologic study from Finland and Sweden, which further supports the idea that clozapine offers some protection against the development of a substance use problem in patients with a diagnosis of schizophrenia, more than other antipsychotics. However, 
the notion that D2 blockade might promote craving for dopamine enhancing substances, including cannabis, is not unequivocally supported in this study because second to clozapine for the prevention of substance use was antipsychotic polytherapy and long acting injectables. The latter findings are tangled up in potential confounders more than the clozapine superiority finding. So here's the bottom line. If no other means is found to address Randy's dual diagnosis of schizophrenia and cannabis and alcohol use, switching his risperidone to clozapine might lead to a better outcome. Of course, clozapine has more severe metabolic problems, but with the advent of the GLP-1 agonists for weight control and weight loss, maybe clozapine's risk-benefit ratio could radically improve here soon. That's an issue including an economic and social justice issue for another quick take. For more on all this, I've obviously skimmed over most of this new epidemiologic study. You'll see more of its structure and its main results in its figure one.